Okay, so now on the back of this leech-like creature, there are going to be several um, sort of round uh, gel-filled sacks. And so if I similar in nature to this creature right here. So you see how it has all of these little these sort of holes in its shell to carry these uh, these other forms. So we're going to focus on that next. So again, with my build tool and my uh, round alpha right here, I'm going to basically just hold down control in order to get those in here, but what I'm seeing is that I want these to be a little bit more vertically oriented. Right now they're kind of pointing out towards the side. So I'm going to make the top of this guy a little bit flatter. So the way I'll do that is once again going back to the muscle tool with a much weaker brush this time around. I'm going to come in about here. Maybe a little bit stronger. All I'm trying to do is just sort of add a platform that I can build off of later with my fill and my build brushes. Following the curvature as best I can. Alright, let's draw another one. And then with a weaker fill brush, I'm going to fill in the bottom here because I want the top part to be pretty smooth, pretty flat, and then I think it's okay to have this kind of drop off very suddenly in order to create the underbody of our bleach. And then what I'm noticing with the build brush is that it's not quite creating the shape that I want it to be. It's very difficult to actually get a nice rounded hole like that, but a little bit uh, still want it to be a little bit better. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to start this off by using the primitives tool. And this time I'm going to use an ellipsoid. And what I can do then is I can set the mode here to subtract and then I'll get a nice clean hole that I can work off of and then I'll roughen it up a little bit later and it'll be much easier to get these kinds of forms and have them be of a more consistent shape than if I was just using the build tool by itself. So the primitives tool can still be very useful even for organic modeling. Okay, great. It looks kind of like a flying saucer now. And that's just because these uh, these holes are all very smooth and very consistent. So I'm going to use my build brush. Okay. The next bit I'm going to work on are some shells, some overlapping shells, similar to these uh, lobster tails. We'll be working on these sort of hard bits that repeat along the uh, along the length of the body. We're going to have these going in between each one of these holes. There's going to be a total of four of them. One at the front, here in the middle, also here in the middle, and then one at the back before we transition into a completely smooth tail. Also, I should save this. So the way we're going to make those shells is by using a new tool. So we're going to go down to Objects, and it's the Vox Layer tool. This one's very fun. So the way this works is that it allows you to make a selection, and then it will basically copy the surface into a new layer. So if I just make one here really quick, 
If I hit enter, that'll generate a selection area. And then if I hit apply, it'll turn it into a new, a new voxel object. So you can imagine for making these kinds of shells, this is a truly invaluable tool. No, don't want to apply. I wanted to clear it. You can also clear it by hitting escape, which is what I just did. Now when you're using this tool, it is very important that you're using, at least for my case, if you want to make a curved selection area, that you use the 3D spline. Now I explained this a little bit in my spaceship tutorial, but I'll go over it again here, just real quick. Is that with the 2D spline, which is the one that doesn't have 3D next to it, if I were to select, say, might actually not really matter on this particular model, but if I were to draw a point right here, my selection will change slightly depending on what angle I'm viewing it from. So if I were to be looking at it from, say, this angle, it looks great, but then when I get to the side, you'll see that the selection area and the uh, the spline that I drew don't necessarily line up. They only line up from the view I had when I hit apply. Now in this case I would probably have already been looking at it from the correct angle but that is an unpredictability that I don't want to risk when I'm making these kinds of selections. The 3D spline does not have this problem because it is based on the uh, the normal of the surface that it is drawn onto. So, bearing that in mind, let's begin. Now before I start, I'm going to go up to this little triangle box right here, and I'm going to turn off B splines. That'll just make sure that the curve has to travel through every single point that I specify, and it'll make uh, drawing the curve a little bit easier, and the line will not be trying to cut through the mesh as you see it's doing right here. It'll more consistently stay on the surface. Now if I right click on a point, it'll become a sharp corner, which is what I want for some of these areas. Okay, I accidentally draw, drew a point there, just want to make sure I'm on edit points, and, and I can continue to move these around. Okay, I'll hit enter. Whoa, we got a little bit that we didn't uh, want to have there. That's okay though. So as you see, we got a little extra here. Now that may have had to do with the low resolution that we were modeling at, but if that ever happens, we can select a non-shape brush mode. And if we hold down control, we can actually erase from our selection area so we can refine it. See, we could get rid of something if we wanted. We could also just draw in a selection area by hand, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep drawing with my spline. Now notice, by hitting apply, all we did was we made this selection area. We haven't actually extruded a new Vox layer. That won't happen until we hit apply. So we're still free to draw however many other selection areas we want. So I'll go ahead and draw all those for you real quick. Okay, so now that I have my selection area, I'm ready to extrude it. So there's a couple of options to keep in mind here, and that is the thickness and the layer offset. So the thickness is obviously just how thick it is, and the layer offset is how far off from the, um, from the selected mesh will the new object be created. So with a negative number, it'll actually be sunk in a tiny bit which is what I want. I don't want this hovering off in space, which is what would happen if we made it a positive number. So if I hit enter, wow, 
or just apply again. Now you'll see this is what we get.